Okay, we're back here live at IBM's Information On Demand in Las Vegas. This is where Ground Zero is for Big Data Week starting today. This is SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv's uh, The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with an IBM executive, Colin Shearer, who runs the advanced analytics solutions business for IBM. IBM's got a new announcement today, some, some cloud-based analytic uh, activity that we're going to talk about. Colin, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, very good to be here. Thanks for having me along. So we're here at IOD, John, you know, just <laughs> nonstop. You know, yeah, well, great, to great to have you. You've got some things coming out around the corner in terms of product technology. Tell us what you're working on and That's we'll right. jump into the questions. Well, this is something we've announced today. It's a new offering called IBM Analytic Answers. And as you said, it's to do with the cloud and it's advanced analytics. And what we're doing is bringing those together to try to make the power and the value of advanced analytics really for the first time available to the types of users who wouldn't have been able to embark on this journey in the past. We're talking, for example, smaller mid-market organizations. Like what size? Well, we've seen typically in the past, if you look at you know, the track record of predictive analytics, there's no question, and you heard this in spades today in the, in the keynotes, you've heard the sort of value that it generates. But typically, it's the larger organizations, the big enterprises, the household names, who, have, who basically invest up front in the software they need, getting into the infrastructure, acquiring or building up the skills that they need. That puts it beyond the scale of, say, somebody who could be you know, an insurer with a modest number of customers, so you know, maybe a million policyholders or something like that, or a small retailer, a specialist, for example, you know, selling an e-commerce operation. They've got the same business problems. They're just as significant to them within their own world, but, it tip but it's been much harder for them to even contemplate using this type of analysis. Because of just the sheer size and complexity, or what has been the core issue well, for it's, it's a set of barriers, really which is that it's the, first of all, these companies don't have deep pockets. So they're not able to invest up front. And then even if they were able to get their hands on the software, the powerful software to do this, where do the skills come from? They've either got to train people up, get new people on board to do it, and so on. And then they've got to look at how would they plummet into their IT architectures, which are often you know, not as advanced, for example, as some of the, the Yeah, they're like to have email. Exactly. The email work. <laughs> yeah, and, and, so, and so these are the challenges. And then going along with those, you know, as if these weren't enough, all of these together, lead to them having a longer, a long lead time before they begin to see value. They've got to do all this stuff and then begin to get the payback that we know is there with advanced analytics. So what we're doing is we're trying to remove all of those barriers. In terms of the cost and accessibility, it's a subscription-based service. In terms of the uh, skills gap, they don't need technical skills. So we're building solutions in the cloud that are based on IBM's expertise. We've done jobs like you know, using advanced analytics to do insurance renewals over and over again. We're encapsulating our knowledge from that in the cloud, doing the analysis all behind the scenes in the cloud, and producing only the results that feed back directly to the line of business. That's why we call it analytic answers, because all they see are the analytic answers that they need to do their business with. Very little IT involvement, cloud-based, the line of business uploads the data, gets back the results. Okay, so first of all, we love big data, so there's no argument from us on any kind of new products that help get answers faster yeah. and uh, removing those barriers, because it's totally true. Uh, yeah. But that assumes that they know the questions, mm -hmm. right? So the questions is the big part that big data talks about, and, yeah. and some, you know, the smarter kind of answers you can get back with yeah. analytics. So how does a small, medium mass enterprise understand the questions? Is it programmed into their processes already? Mm -hmm. Unstructured data opens up a whole new can of worms around just, this. Just to be clear about this, we are, providing the answers to a set of specific questions. Okay, so, so they know not, the questions. Yeah, we're not yeah, exactly. We're not providing this as some general analytical capability for them. Instead, as I said, we've taken our experience, we know the places where this can really deliver a lot of value. We've selected a set of those solutions in different industries, in different business areas. We have built those in a package form, and they are the ones that they so can buy as well. So this talks about the payback. The yeah. The customers know what they need. Yeah. It's easy to do. Mm -hmm and they get the answers they're looking for. That's, that's <laughs> right. so I, I couldn't have it better myself. Yeah. Like we should write that down for Mark. So, okay, so, so it's on. We got it. We got it, it's more or less. Okay. That's Can we go through right silicon angle yes, right now? Yes, absolutely. So, you know. Absolutely. So this is a forthcoming product, and when we ship it, it will have four initial answers available. Uh, three of them are to do with specific industries. So one is insurance renewals, and that addresses the problem of when a policy holder comes up you know, to, to go, as a, uh, to renew their policy, will they stay or not? and this gives them back the answer for each of them, the probability of will they stay loyal or not, and if, the, if they're at risk of being disloyal, if we've got the information to support it, what's the right sort of incentive that would persuade them to stay loyal? For retailers, 
we have what we call purchase analysis and offer targeting. The purchase analysis part only needed something as simple as point of sale data. It finds the combinations of things, the market basket combinations that tend to be brought together. It gives them information on those which could form new sorts of offers, new promotions. But it can go further than that because if they can link those purchases to a customer, say a registered web shopper, or to a loyalty card holder, for example, then it will help to match individual offers to specific customers. Okay, so they're able to, to know exactly what to offer to whom and get much, much higher conversion rates at individual level than more general marketing campaigns. The third one takes us out of the commercial sector and is actually about student retention. And here, it allows educational institutions at different levels to analyze data on their students and see which ones are performing below their predicted potential. When that is the case, understand that these may be on the route to dropping out, for example, and work out what the best intervention is in order to be able to keep them, you know, get them back on track and keep them in the institution. And the fourth one actually goes across industries. It's what we call prioritized debt collection. And any type of organization, you know, could have their accounts receivable department challenged with, in today's economy, rising levels of debt and challenges in collecting it. Because they only have so many resources, often being cut all the time. How do they know who to go after to, to maximize their returns? In the case of this solution, what we're providing them with are three pieces of information. For each debt or debtor is the probability they'll pay, how much they're likely to pay, and what is going to be the best treatment that would persuade them to pay. And that means that they know which ones are debts that should be written off, but also which ones they can pursue and where they should take the scarce resources to ensure and that they're so automating the whole them. thing. Yeah. You're yeah. automating the whole thing for yeah. business. Absolutely. The, I said they just get back the answers. At the individual case level, it's actual. For this debt, collected by just simply sending an SMS reminder. Okay, sounds easy. So just take me through how they would do that. So they engage with the services team. Mm -hmm. what, what, what would someone do to get started? What, what they do is when getting started, as you said, is about an engagement initially, but a very, very lightweight engagement because as I was telling you, what we're starting off with are types of solution we've done over and over again. We have, you know, IBM has done something like 20,000 analytics engagements. From that, we have distilled for these what you might think of as assets, templates, blueprints, or whatever. So we're already sitting there with the skeleton of how to do, say, an insurance renewals application. Yeah? When we come to, when a client signs up for analytic answers for, ins for insurance renewals, what we then do is engage with them. We understand what's different from their data, from the more general model we might have looked at, what's, you know, what they have, what they don't have, what additional data they have that, that might be valuable to it. We then get that to define a historic is data the, sample. The we take down? that historic data and we build the predictive models in the cloud and get it up and running very quickly. And from the point when that is up and running, they have a very simple interface where they simply, on an ongoing basis, in the case of an insurer, maybe every month as policies are coming towards renewal, upload the set of data for those policies, download it, enhance with the results. So, Simple as that. So you st let's start with that engagement. So you say you engage with the client. Yeah. So what does that mean? You have some kind of kickoff meeting where you get everybody in the room that's necessary? We, we, this will all be done remotely. We will very rarely, I think, be, be out inside. We okay, want to keep so this you, lightweight. So we I don't have to see you in my no. shop. No. Nope. Okay, if, if I don't want to see you, no offense, but nope. I'm busy, right? Okay, small, mid-sized businesses. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so you do that remotely. So mm -hmm. how do you initiate that in, initial engagement? You say this is the, these are the The way, the, the way we'll be doing it is we have a, we have a we certain need, expectation or? of, you know, we, as I said, we know how to tackle this, and we know what are typically the type of the data items that yep. are going to be predictive for this. Right. So we start off, we set the conversation by saying, okay, here's the sort of thing we're looking for. Do you have these? Do you have things that match that? Do you have things that are close that we might have to manipulate a bit to get that? Mm -hmm. But also leaving a little bit open to say, what other data do you have? Because it's very easy for us with our technology to add in incremental data that might be valuable. And it's really just from that discussion comes the definition of two things. One is to say, okay, now you know, tell what historical data can you give us? And we work with them to say what's an appropriate, you know, is it last year's data of renewals or whatever it is? And to also define on an ongoing basis, what shape of data will you set up as your questions? What records will you upload to us? And that's really all we need to establish. Okay, so they send you that data, mm -hmm. however they get it to you. Yeah. Uh, and then you ingest it. We ingest it, this is the historic data, yep. we take it away, and basically we have the, we, using the templates we've got, we tailor them specifically to their data, we build the predictive models, and we build the associated analytical processes to apply those models, for example. And that's it, that is the kernel of what then sits as their analytic answer solution in the cloud. And then you deploy that as a cloud-based offering, mm -hmm. and how do you charge for that? Purely, purely subscription based. Okay. And okay. So the, the, that is, the, we are not intending to, to, to charge separate uh, setup costs or anything like that. Basically, it's going to be a subscription only service. There's no setup cost. That is our intention. Okay. Alan, question for you, a little bit changing mm -hmm. gears off the product uh, value proposition is just global marketplace. You guys have yeah. done twenty thousand zillion uh, yeah. analytics. You're automating it. Great. Mm -hmm. Good. A plus for IBM, um, and good for customers. Yeah. 
Talk about the global marketplace. What's different around the mm -hmm. US and different countries? Obviously there's privacy concerns everyone always wants yep. to know about. You, know, you guys have also run into all that. So take us through the follow the sun through the U but, North America, mm -hmm. Europe, and yep. uh, I think you, you, see, you see variations, I mean the, the point you made about privacy, you see variations about how far you can move data, for example. So you, you're in some levels you're at the, the border, the country border, some cases the large states. So for example, the EU has laws about data itself. But going with that, and again looking at, and relating this back to what we're doing with analytic answers, one of the things that we're trying to do is, is to really step as far as we can away from concerns about confidentiality and privacy of data. So, we need to, to do this sort of stuff. The one piece of information we don't need to know about you is who you are. I need to know lots of things about you, like what your insurance policy covers and how long you've had it and what claims you've had and so on. I don't need to know anything that would identify you as an individual. So we're actually, in one of the positions we're taking with this is we will not accept personally identifiable information. So we're immediately removing the risk of the organizations. Of so right up data. front, firewall yeah, that, absolutely. we don't even want it. No, we don't want it, we don't want it. The other thing that, that I would say is a characteristic of the more of the, of the, the market of maturity, let's say, around the world, takes us into the difference between the US and Europe and the growth markets. Now in the US and Europe, you will certainly find a, you know, a maturity in analytics. You'll have large enterprises, so certainly you know, well up to speed on it, and there are, there are pools of talent around there. In the case of the growth markets, you often find them in a state of accelerated development. And they are trying almost to leapfrog, in many cases, the more developed markets. And, try, and, and which to, ones would that be? If you, if you look at, at, at ASEAN, for example, look at you know, the tiger economies and such like, you see ones that have a vision of moving, you know, not just following the same generations as some of the other, as some of the more developed countries have, but actually trying to move very quickly on that. So they're looking for an accelerated path to value. And the, the analytic answers approach, the way it applies to that is you know, begin to get results very quickly. You don't have to reach out, try to find the trained resources, try to develop it. So they can begin to turn this on and can begin to get value much more quickly than you could do by traditional methods. So from that perspective, we think it's a very good fit for the developing markets. And so, back to the sort of offering, if I may. Your, your fees are a function of, of what? The volume of data that they're doing? The size of company? How do you... It's, for each, it. for each of these offerings, what they get for their subscription at the base level is they can process a certain number of records per month. Okay, so it's a monthly subscription. Mm -hmm. And if they, want to, if they want to do more than that, there are different levels they can scale up to. But it is still aimed, as I mentioned, at typically smaller enterprises or departmental use. So typically, you're not going to find you know, enormous supermarket chains using this. You will find smaller convenience chains or small uh, retailers using this. And we set the actual numbers of what those records are based on what constitutes a modest sized retailer, a modest sized insurer, and so on. But it's classic cloud. They can dial up or dial down their, yeah. their volume with you as a function of their uh, ROI. Uh, uh, Absolutely, but, it, but, but and you can do, but if you were, say, a Walmart or somebody like that, you know, you, it probably wouldn't make sense to dial up the uh, complete analytic answers approach. There are way other ways you could do that. You could, you could afford to bring it in-house and take a more sophisticated approach. Because you mustn't forget, this is not just about scale. This is a first step on the journey. This will give an organization that has never done analytics before, and you know, the immediate advantages are beginning to deploy, the results of predictive analytics. And we know the sort of thing that can do for them. But it's still going to be a first step. It's always going to be possible to go further. Now for some organizations, they won't. They, may, they will stay at that level, and the one that bought the analytic answer for insurance renewals may next buy the one for policy cross-sell and for customer acquisition, and for uh, claims risk scoring, or, or things like that, for example. They stay at the same level. Other ones, seeing the power, you know, might want to migrate into something they can take more control of themselves. So they've now justified the investment to tool up, as it were, with the software themselves and to skill up with the people to use it. So we see different paths and trajectories, but it's an important first step to begin to get value for them and get them on the analytics journey. Well, plus I see it as a way for the smaller businesses to compete with some of the larger ones. I mean, mm -hmm. you're talking about the, the retail purchase analysis. Mm -hmm. I mean, Amazon you know, is yeah. doing product matching, and every time I come mm -hmm. in there, they're making recommendations, whereas the smaller yeah. websites are just, please buy my stuff. Yeah. So this gives them a capability that they wouldn't be able to have otherwise. Absolutely, with, you know, with the limitations of scale. So for example, one of the things we're not doing with analytic councils, although our overall predictive analytics technology can certainly do this, as you've heard in today's keynotes, you know, we can deliver in real time. We can deliver real time on massively streaming data, for example. We're not doing that with analytic answers. It's a batch process, you upload a set of data, you get back a set of results. So the contrast would be that Amazon, while you're on the website, mm. is 
is firing offers at you, right, left and centre. In the case of analytic answers, it could be a small e-commerce operation that every visitor who's checked out in that last week, they upload the records and it generates the, the, the recommendations for what to offer them, which goes in a follow-up email, for example. You're essentially instrumenting the business processes for mm -hmm. them with this. It's not so much figuring out like a Watson solution. You no. guys are coming in saying, hey, small, medium-sized enterprises have known business <laughs> challenges. Yeah. You've seen 20,000 zillion cases, so mm -hmm. okay, let's automate it, yeah. instrument uh, it, and turn and, key. Yeah. And I think a very important, I think that's a very good way of putting it, I'll add something important to it. We talk about this being, you know, solve your business problems one answer at a time. And that's not just meant to be a sort of, you know, slick and trite way of phrasing it. The beauty of these solutions... Even though it is, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of this is, it comes down to the individual case level. This isn't giving you a general idea of, you know, we should be giving 10% off insurance renewals for older customers, or whatever it is. It is actually telling you, in this case, yeah. here's the, the, what's predicted to happen, and here's what we prescribe you should do about it. Now, what that means is, every time you're processing one of these cases, you're unable to make a better decision. When you make a better decision, and take the right action, the odds are you will drive a better outcome. And the ROI meter just ticks up and up and up. It's incremental, it's very highly measurable. We're here with Colin Shear, we're learning a lot about some of the new stuff IBM has for small medium. It's not so much fast moving, it's prefabricated, but it's designed to instrument the businesses with, with answers, this answers product. Um, I guess my next final question, if Dave has a final question, we'll get to it but, uh, as well, but my final question is, what's next, okay? They get addicted mm -hmm. to the system, it's providing business value, they're going to want to do more. So talk about what's next in the next uh, couple years. Certainly. How they build on it from an IBM perspective, and mm -hmm. then how you see the market trends that are orbiting around I'm, that. I'm, well, I'm very glad you, you, you brought up the future and then talked about the IBM perspective and beyond, as it were. Because we, as I said, this is a forthcoming offering. When it comes out, there will be a small kernel, a small set of answers. And we've handpicked those as ones we know are good wins for a, a range of different types of company. The vision going forward is like an app store. So think of this arranged by many different industries. Like expense reports, but yeah. for like business yeah, processes. And many, yeah, exactly, and many different functions within those. So within customer analytics, things to do to, to grow customer value, to retain customers and so on. Operational analytics, finance and risk, all of those things. And we want to make a lot of these available for customers just to subscribe to the ones that are going to be relevant for them. And like I said earlier, you might start off with renewals, go to cross-sell and upsell, go to acquisition, go to claims processing and so on. Now, where this plays broader than IBM, is we want to use this model going forward. Our, you know, our intention is to make it, is to make it as rich a, a, a set of choices and options for our customers as possible. Partners are going to be fundamental to that. Yeah. So we anticipate, and we haven't yet defined and published the partner program, so we anticipate it will be, that we will make it possible for partners to be able to build their own answers apps. Yeah, and, and that's, a good, learn, that's yeah. a good approach, because what you're doing is, you're not biting off more than you can chew, as they mm -hmm. say. You're getting a beachhead around known solutions, yeah. and then you kind of you yeah. know, grow from there. And leverage uh, the ecosystem. Yeah, to, and and to we innovate. know there are partners who've got specialized knowledge and experience in places even we haven't necessarily got. Yeah, let them do that. Yeah, and they can bring those in. So we'll see them bringing in certain niche answers, but also just a range of choices, different approaches. Try them out. Colin so Shear, oh, my sorry. last question. Last okay. question is when? When will this be available? Well, as, as, uh, as always with future looking statements, you know, we're not committing to specific dates, but our intention at the moment is to bring this out within the next quarter. Okay, great. Okay, Colin Shear, Global Executive for Advanced Analytics Solutions for IBM Business Analytics. Thanks for coming inside theCUBE. Um, great session, great new product. Again, automating and instrumenting business and hopefully customers. Uh, is the future of big data, we love it. Uh, it's very complex, you're making it easy, appreciate it. This is SiliconANGLE t uh, TV, siliconangle.com and wikibon.org coverage of theCUBE from IOD. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>